So recently, a family member was sorting through boxes and found some old art supplies from the 60s. He said, do you want some really old pencil crowns? And I was like, eh, sure, I'll take them. Well, I wasn't expecting anything quite this iconic. <laughs> this is a 72 piece set of Derwent pencils. Perfect condition, unused. The featured artwork is gorgeous. And look at the marketing on this. <laughs> Scientifically produced based on the standard shades of the British Color Council. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I was kind of afraid to use them because they're so mint, <laughs> but I felt just as weird about the idea of hoarding them for another 60 years. So I wanted to try them at least once. The pencils do have wax bloom on them. So I decided to do a quick test of their color. Looks good. They almost feel like Prismacolor, but the wood is very hard. <laughs> I only ever really had one official lesson on pencil crayons in grade school, and at the time we were encouraged to use colored construction paper for good effect, so I wanted to try that again, but I didn't have any toned paper on hand, so I painted a piece of watercolor paper yellow, which I don't think was the best color choice in the end, <laughs> and you'll see why. So the package doesn't mention light fastness anywhere, which tells you whether or not the colors will fade with light exposure. I did send an email to the company to ask if they knew anything. And they responded, saying that they didn't really know if there even was a light fastness rating in the 1960s. So I'm thinking that there's a really good chance that they're not light fast. And maybe this was a silly idea, but I decided to start blocking in a few of the main shapes with watercolor first, uh, just in case. I don't mean to seem pretentious about the whole light fast issue all the time. I do enjoy the character of aged papers and drawings and stuff, but I also like to imagine my art hanging in a room full of beautiful natural sunlight. And so I just really want to set it up for a good future wherever possible. And maybe this is a silly way to do it. Oh. The first thing I noticed about this set is the smell. The reality of keeping an item in a box in the dark is it has a very strong musty basement smell to it. In small doses, I actually really like this smell. It reminds me of digging through a shed to find the good inner tubes to take to the lake. It kind of smells like pulling a cozy jacket out of the closet for the first rainy day of autumn. I kind of don't mind this. Okay, so the art that I'm making today feels a bit weirder than usual. It took me forever to break these out and try them because I'm kind of going through a difficult mental month right now. <laughs> and Holly actually recently uploaded a video where she said, what's the point of making art right now when the nature that we paint, what inspires us, is actively dying? And while I was drawing this, we were in level 5 drought after not seeing rain for like 4 months. And what is usually an inspiring and calming walk through the woods recently turned uncomfortable when the frog pond was reduced to a puddle of thick mud instead. And we could see these little tiny fish slithering over each other trying to stay damp in this mud. You know, and that's just like our personal experience, not even just the stuff that we're seeing happening all around the world online. And while I didn't really find Holly's call to action video to be motivating or inspiring, it did kind of give me a clue as to where my art block might be coming from. I saw a piece of art by Lauren Marks, and she makes provocative and even kind of gory artwork about the ugly parts of nature. Parts that we tend to ignore when we envy the simple lives of forest animals. The theme of her series is how even in nature, life is brutal and unforgiving and violent. And on the other hand, one life's end is the continuation of another. And since my art is stylistically a little bit similar to hers anyway, I wanted to try my hand at her theme, as it looked like a really effective way to express existential dread in a visual way, <laughs> which I think I needed. And so in this one, I drew hummingbirds in a plum tree, the plum moth larvae destroy the plums, the birds eat the larvae, and eventually soil inhabitants will turn the birds themselves into nutrient-rich soil in which a new tree would grow. So even though it is technically just the natural circle of life, it's still kind of terrifying. <laughs> or at least kind of unpleasant. My thoughts on the pencils themselves, they seem pretty good. As I came to the end, I really struggled with maintaining a focal point for this drawing, and I mostly blame my decision to start with a yellow background. <laughs> I just wanted the warmth 
Uh, but yellow forces itself so aggressively forward that the space kind of feels flat. I may have had better success if I picked a cooler color. Or I might add more to this drawing to make it cooler. I don't know what I'll do. And the white pencil crayon was not really powerful enough to make really good contrast either. I'm also reminded of why I switched from pencil crayon to watercolor in the first place. I'm definitely one of those people who tends to keep a death grip on pencils. And so I'm always pressing so hard against the paper that my arm hurts and my index finger pad still feels tenderized since 20 years ago when I used to use pencil crayons all the time. So I probably haven't discovered any new calling in pencil crayon drawings, but these seem pretty legit. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.